Welcome back to The Average Drinker. I'm Dara and I have hair in my felt face. Oh my gosh, that was like a total fail. Welcome back to The Average, wait, wait, wait. Let's try that again. Let's try it again. Welcome back to The Average Drinker. I'm Dara, I'm your average drinker. And today you see five glasses in front of me. One, two, three, four, five. And that means I have something to tell you, right? And what I have to tell you today are about five whiskeys I regret buying. Yeah, I really thought I'd never say that I regret buying something because I love whiskey. Each whiskey is unique. Each whiskey tastes different and good and enjoyable. Well, most of the time, but not every time. Believe me, not every time does whiskey taste good. And even when you let the bottle open up, you taste it numerous times. Sometimes you still end up with a bottle that you don't really enjoy. And that's okay, because whiskey drinking is subjective. Every palate's different. You might like some bottles better than the other bottle or whatever, but I'm telling you, it's okay if you regret buying a certain whiskey, because I do. In fact, I have five bottles out of like 300 that I regret buying. And then I'm like, oh, why did I get suckered into buying that bottle? Can't even believe it. Sometimes I get freaking mad. Like these, oh, no. I better calm down before I get out of control. All right, I'm gonna start this off on a nice note. And that's with scooting some of these glasses out of the way. How is that nice? I don't know how that's nice. Okay, so we got one glass in front of us. I'm gonna bring up the first bottle. Dickle Tabasco, just kidding. I bet you thought that I might bring up Dis Dickle Tabasco as a bottle I regret buying, but I don't. I don't regret buying this bottle. It might be terrible. It might be really, really, really bad. It's bad, but it's really fun for punishments, unless Bill is punishing me with this whiskey because I lost a bet, but it's fun. It's fun and it has a purpose. But the other bottles I'm about to bring up, they don't have a purpose. They just sit on my shelf and they sit there and I try them again. I'm like, maybe I'll like this this time. Oh, heck no. I don't like them. I don't like them one bit because they are bad. Well, maybe not terrible. Maybe not, I'm, I, maybe I'm getting a little extreme here. All right, so let's put the dickle down. We got the dickle, it's down. The dickle is down. Let's bring up the first bottle that I regret buying. And that bottle is this. Yep, you notice it. It's a high west bottle. Let's pop this cork. This one, let's pour just a little splash because I might try it again. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't, probably not. This is the high west, high country, American single malt, limited supply, 88 proof. Turn this back to you. So it's a cool looking bottle. Every bottle that High West does is a cool looking bottle. I love their bottles. I love them. I love the bottle. Can I just say that enough? I love this bottle. It's beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. Oh, it's fabulous, darling. It's fabulous. But let's talk about this tasting note right here that it says, okay? I'm just gonna read this one because there's a tasting note on there. All right, toasted marshmallow, roasted walnuts, and honeycomb. All right, let's sniff this sucker. Nope, nope, still don't like the nose on that. It makes me turn up my, nope, 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 nope. It smells malty. I am not gonna dog this bottle because that's not nice. High West has some great bottles and some of the stuff High West has, I love. Midwinter's Night Dram, the Burr Eye they just came out with, holy moly, freaking phenomenal. That's good. This, however, is not good. Not, not good. On the nose on this one, it's sharp. It smells young. It smells very young. And actually, I don't think this is age dated at all. I might be wrong. Let's see if this is age dated because I don't want to make myself a fool, but no, I do not believe that this one is age dated. So not age dated, but it smells very young. It smells a bit to me like a sharp 
cheddar mac and cheese that you kind of let cool down a little bit. It smells malty. I do get a hint of that honey. So it's almost like you took some of that honey and you put it on your sharp cheddar mac and cheese. And that's what it smells like. It doesn't smell, it smells grassy, like prairie grass. Um, like your, so prairie grass, white cheddar cheese, macaroni and cheese, and honey. A very odd to me. It doesn't, if, it like, it doesn't touch my nose hairs in a very nice way. Like, it's like, touches my nose hairs and I'm like, whoa, 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 no, why, why did you do that to me? Okay, let's taste it because I'm being a little bean. I I'm being a little mean, okay? I just, it's just kind of meh, right? So you get it on the palate, get a little bit of that honey, you get a little bit of that grassiness. It just tastes very, very young to me and malty. And I'm just, I'm not a fan of it. It's one I regret buying because I, it's just gonna sit on my shelf and I feel so bad because it's gonna sit on my shelf. And I just, I wanna drink every whiskey I get, right? <laughs> like me, well, and Bill too. We're the type of people that if we get a bottle of whiskey, we open it as soon as we get it. We really wanna enjoy every bottle we have, but this is just one that I don't love. I do not love this. I do regret buying this because this is just, it's a little sharp, a little young, and I, I've said things, I just don't really like it. So, regret buy one. Regret buying this one, probably not gonna drink it again. Sorry, Hi West, I love you, but I do not love this bottle. All right, let's put that one aside. Actually, I'm gonna put it back on the table. Set that pour down. All right, now it's time for the next glass. Oh boy, oh boy, uh-oh, uh-oh. It is time to move on to the next bottle. And the next bottle, oh gosh, I don't even wanna bring this one up because not only have I said this is a bad bottle, bad, is bad. Have I, I've said this one is bad. Matt Porter, ADHD Whiskey, he agreed with me. I sent him a sample of this and he said it was bad. It's not good. He was so mad, he literally threw the Glen Karen on the ground. Not to mention, I wasted $75 of my own money. Hard earned money at that. Okay, we're talking about the Wabash, I mean, I'm talking about the Wabash Reserve. From K-State, Boot Hill Distillery, it's not from K-State, it's from Boot Hill Distillery. This one is bad. It's bad. I keep trying it in hopes that it will get better. This one comes in at 90 proof. So if you didn't know, if you haven't watched the video yet, ugh, I'm not pouring too much of that because it is not good. I'm taking one for the team right here. I'm not gonna throw my Glen because I have only a certain amount of Glens and I do not want to throw them. <coughs> but I went to college at K-State. I bought this bottle, super excited. I wanted to love this bottle and I don't. I love my alma mater. I love Manhattan, Kansas. I love the Power Cat, love K-State. Don't love this whiskey, it's bad, it's bad. Oh, you know what? After smelling the nose on that High West High Country, this one actually doesn't even smell quite as bad as High West High Country. It tastes bad, believe me, and it smells bad, but on the nose, it's not as bad. Like you don't know what you're about to get. You, you like smell it and you're like, okay, it smells young, you get a little bit of caramel, you get a little bit of vanilla, almost smells like a little bit of cotton candy-like, but wait, you take a drink of it and it's like, I got you, I got you, you're bad. Ugh. Nope, nope. <coughs> no, that's not good, it's not good. It doesn't taste good. Never doing it again. Regret buying this. Regret the $75 that I spent on it. <coughs> that was bad, okay? Time to get rid of that bottle. Wabash Reserve, you're bad. Sorry. I, I know I appreciate what Boot Hill Distillery is doing, but I'm just telling you, I do not like that bottle. It's not for me, and that's okay because every palette is different. And if you like it, that's 
that's good for you because that's your palette, not mine. And my palette does not like that. So I'm moving on. I'm getting rid of that glass. That is, can you imagine mixing all these together? Oh, no way. No chance. That would not be good. Or would it? No, no, I don't think so. Okay, so the next bottle. The next bottle we got is a bottle that someone at a liquor store told us, if you like Weller 12 year, then this is a good alternative bottle. And I'm like, all right, we had a bourbon. I'm pretty sure I like Weller 12 year. I mean, it's highly allocated, it's pretty good. I don't love weeded bourbons as much because they're a little too sweet for my palate, but I like them. And some of them are very good. But let's bring out the next sucker that I was a sucker for. And that is Redemption Weeded Bourbon. Yeah, bought that sucker too. Let's pour one of those up. You know what, after the last two bottles, anything has got to be better than those. Pretty good cork pop. See, I haven't tasted this one. That's plenty, that is plenty. I haven't tasted this one in a while. Let's give this sucker a try. Okay, so first I'll tell you about this one. It comes in at 96 proof. It says, our weeded bourbon is a mash of corn, wheat, and malted barley, giving it a smooth, mellow character. The extended barrel aging impacts a toasty, nutty aroma. A blend of 51% corn, 46% winter wheat, and 4% malted barley aged in new charred oak barrels. I have seen people talk about redemption. I have seen good things about other bottles. However, I have hardly seen anyone talk about this one and that's because it's not very good. Nope. Nope. I regret buying it. It doesn't mean it's bad. Just because I regret buying it doesn't mean it's bad. I just mean it's not that great. For me, it does not match my profile. I do not enjoy it. I'm probably never going to drink it again after this video. That could be a lie too, though. I might drink it again. Might get a wild hair. Might trick Bill with it. Sometimes we like to do blinds and I'm like, hey, you want to try this whiskey? You might like it. It might be good. And sometimes they do well, but not this one. Nope. Not this one. All right. So on the nose, this one isn't... It's not super complex. I get some, like, malted corn... Sweet, it smells very sweet. A little bit of vanilla, it does not burn the nose hairs. I mean, it's not as bad and not as like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not as like harsh or young smelling as the Wabash or the High West. It just smells fine, it smells fine, okay? Let's taste it, let's give this one a little swig. I mean, it's not bad, okay? I'll admit that. It's not bad. It's a very, very, very sweet. Very sweet with some, like, it's almost like a syrupy caramel, of like a syrupy caramel with like a tiny hint of cinnamon on the back end. But the flavor kind of dies out. It doesn't dry out though which is nice. So that, that has something going for it for, but it's very, very sweet. It's not bad though. It's not, it is not bad. The other two were not good. This one is not bad though. I, I could drink this again. Do I love it? No, no, not at all. Am I going to reach for something else on my shelf when I could have the chance to drink this? Yes. Is Weller 12 year much better than this? Yes. But Comparing a Redemption to a Weller 12 year is very difficult. That brand has built up and their barrels are, barrels are very good. And I'm talking about Buffalo Trace. Very good stuff. This, not quite there. We're not, we're not there yet. But it's not that bad. I just regret buying it because it's one that is just going to sit on the shelf and I'm probably not going to drink it again. So... That's just how it is. It's not that good to me. It doesn't match my flavor profile. A little too sweet for me. Actually, it's, it's very much too sweet. And the proof is a little low. It just, it's just like syrup. I feel like syrup, it's fine. Maybe it would be good on my pancakes or my French toast or something, but don't love this one. So another regret buy off the list. We're gonna set this one to the side now. Okay, so now it's time to bring in another glass. 
in another bottle. And the next bottle, it's not quite a king of Kentucky, but it is a cream of Kentucky. Is this a gimmick or something? Do people get confused and buy cream of Kentucky thinking it's king of Kentucky? I don't know, but that's my guess. And that's why I'm thinking people get really excited if, about cream of Kentucky. Okay, let me pour this. <sighs> that was a tight cork. Wow. That, that's enough. All right, so this is a bottled and bond cream of Kentucky. Oh my God. Oh my. Okay. 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 Definitely just threw that cork out the window. All right. <clears throat> Back to this cork. I really want to like this one. I do. Because I know other people enjoy this. I don't love it. It's not bad. But I don't love it. And I regret buying it. Because I could have spent my money on other whiskey that I really enjoyed. Okay, so this one comes in at 100 proof because it's bottled and bond. This is a Cream of Kentucky Estate Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Bottled by J.W. Rutledge in Crestwood, Kentucky. Cream of Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Bottled and bond. Ryman Rye Estate Grown, Distilled and Aged and Bottled in Artisan Distillery in Crestwood, Kentucky. Limited to only 70 barrels. This unique Kentucky rye whiskey is one of a kind released for cream of Kentucky. All right, so let's talk about the nose on this sucker. On the nose, it smells like a single malt. It is very creamy, very malty flavoring, like a, like a grassy pasture type smell. Grassy pasture smell. I get that out of this cream of Kentucky. It does smell creamy, hence the name cream of Kentucky. It also reminds me of cream corn. My mom used to make this cream corn in a crock pot. And maybe this is me just like trying to connect. But I do get that creaminess on the nose. So that's okay. It does smell like this cream corn my mom used to make in the crock pot. She put corn in there. Like cream corn. So cream corn... Cream cheese, sugar, salt, pepper, let it sit in the crock pot all day. And that's the smell that I get out of this. So it's not a horrible smell. It just smells very sweet, malty. Let's take a sip of this. It's a little bit better on the palate than I've given it credit for in the past. I do get some of those spicy baking notes, but I also get this weird pastry, corny taste out of it. It tastes very young. It tastes not quite like it was ready to be bottled. Like I get this, it's very odd to me. Strangely enough, I just got a coffee note out of it that I've never gotten. It's all right. It might be a little, it's actually, it's probably the best bottle out of all of these that I have on the table. It's not bad, but I do regret buying this because I don't, I had expect, expectations out of this one because I've heard others say that it was good. But the smell on the nose just ruins it for me. I mean, the nose is like literally a one or a two on my scale of rating whiskey. So it's not, it's totally putting me off. The palette has a nice spice to it, a nice sweetness to it, and a decent finish, but it's just, yeah, it, almost like this toffee coffee finish. The finish is nice on this, I will admit that. But the rest of it, I don't love. I don't love. It's okay. It's all right. It's not bad. You guys, it's not bad. But I just regret buying it because I think that there are other bottles that I would much rather have than this cream of Kentucky. Maybe I'll keep seeking that king of Kentucky and maybe someday I'll find it. But this one is just not that great to me. The finish though. If I could just bottle the finish, the, the finish is good. The finish is very good on this one. That coffee toffee note just hangs there. Ah, oh, I like it. I like it a lot actually. The finish is good. 
Let's just get rid of the rest of the bottle and keep the finish. All right, let's set that one to the side. We got one more regret by left. Hmm, that really does taste like coffee toffee. Toffee coffee deliciousness. It is good on the, on the finish. All right, putting that one to the side. All right, so now we got to move on to my fifth regret buy. I hate bringing this one up. I do. But I'm going to. The Peerless Absinthe. If you haven't watched my video, I'm going to open it. I'm going to pour it. Great after dinner pour. Just because I think, like, I like the bottle doesn't mean I think it's not a regret buy. Because this is a regret buy for me. This bottle cost me $150. Didn't get to try it before I, like, bought it. They wouldn't allow samples. Distiller exclusive. Go back and watch the review if you haven't watched it. Got the hiccups. Excuse me. Okay, so if you haven't watched the review on this one, this one comes in at 114.9 proof. It is a peerless rye whiskey finished in an absinthe barrel. I like absinthe. Love black licorice. I thought, what the heck? Gotta give this one a try. I don't want to pass this one up, right? This one smells so phenomenal. This one, I do get some of those rye spices, but I am overwhelmed with the smell of black licorice on this one. The black licorice pretty much takes over any sense that this might be a whiskey, right? This is a rye whiskey. I get a, a tiniest, I mean, the absolute tiniest hint of rye spice. Most of it is overwhelmed with the fact that it was finished in an absinthe barrel. It spent too much time in the barrel. And that's why I regret buying this one because it's like, this is a $150 bottle. I mean, we're talking like, that's a lot of money to spend on a bottle. Normally, I don't base my whiskey ratings off of price. Like, I don't. I base them off of palette, finish, and nose. And then I give an overall score, which you can find in my rating system. I give an overall score. And I generally do not count price into it. But since this is a video about regret buys, I regret buying this one. Because to me, I might spend 50 or $60 on this bottle, but nothing else. Nothing past that is not worth that to me. And that's why I regret buying it. Because I could have spent that other $100 on something better. Like on another whiskey. Could have gotten two bottles for the price of one. Let's go ahead and taste this sucker because my palate is going to be ruined after this one. Oh, believe me, it is. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, whew. if you're looking for a great after dinner drink, an after dinner whiskey, an after after hours, or like a nightcap, go with this. It is, I love, it reminds me of a Sazerac cocktail, but it's very overpowering with that absinthe. It's good, but it's not worth $150, and I do not get that rye whiskey out of this one. I just don't. I regret buying it. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm sad about it. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side. Actually, no. You know what? I'm just going to bring them all up, back up here. My five regret buys. Have you ever bought a whiskey that you regret? I'm sure you have if you are a whiskey drinker, bourbon enthusiast, whatever you are. I'm sure you have bought something that you're like, I shouldn't have bought that. I wasted my money. <sighs> That's why these reviews are here for you. So we have the Peerless Rye Finishing Absinthe Barrels. Too long, my dad. We have the Cream of, Cream of Kentucky which tastes good on the finish. Not that bad. It gets worse after that. Then we have the Redemption Weeded Bourbon. Wait, yeah. Weeded Bourbon. Redemption Weeded Bourbon. I don't know why I questioned that, but that's what that was. Okay. Then we have the Wabash Reserve. That's actually bad. That's bad. And the High West High Country. So these are my five regret buys. Tell me about yours. I want to know yours. Leave them in the comments. I mean, if you don't have any regret buys, 
then hats off to you. Cheers to you because you are crushing it when buying whiskey. I'm trying to get as much as I can to grow my palate the best that I can. So there's that. That's what I got for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching The Average Drinker. I'm Dara and I'll be back with so much more. I'll see you next time. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun.